Let me know in the comment section really quickly if you've heard this line before. LeBron James is blank, and in the blank it's either a freak of nature, not human, or a mutant. Let me know in the comment section if you've heard that before, because there's something a little bit fishy about LeBron James's career that I can't help but having to jump into. Now, before we do anything here, before we talk about anything here, I have to dispel the notion that I'm a LeBron James hater. I'm a Laker fan. I love LeBron James. I love the fact that my Lakers are actually watchable now, and I am forever appreciative for him coming to our franchise and restoring our franchise to its former glory. With that being said, we just have to dive into the reality of the situation for multiple things because a lot of you guys know that in addition to me being a basketball enthusiast, I'm a hardcore bodybuilder. Well, I wouldn't say hardcore. I don't take HGH or I don't take any steroids or anything like that, but I'm very, very enthusiastic about fitness. And whenever I could, and whenever I could bring my love for fitness and my love for basketball together surrounding my favorite player on my favorite team, then I'm going to jump into it. Has this ever happened to you? Have you ever damn near nicked your ball sack or completely ended up chopping your dick off? Well, there's a company here that's sole mission is to prevent this from ever happening again. And they are called Manscaped. Manscaped designed a perfect shaver to ensure that you never nick your balls again called the Lawnmower 2.0. And as you can see, it's also waterproof and you could use it on other areas other than just your balls. Now, this company is so legitimate that they were able to secure a huge investment from Dallas Mavericks owner, Mark Cuban. And I also got a promo code for you guys to use for 20% off. Use promo code FLIGHTMIKE to get yourself a nice little discount whenever you shop for Manscaped products. When LeBron James was drafted, we all were aware of his physical attributes. We saw how he looked like. He looked like a athletic specimen, but at the same time, we could agree that he was fairly lanky in frame. He had lean muscle, but he didn't get nearly as big as he is now, or he was back in Miami. And of course, in your early 20s, this is your peak age for putting on muscle. And subsequently, we saw LeBron James, as he grew up, would slowly and surely put on more and more muscle. Now, we need to talk about something, and one of my favorite YouTubers, Jimmy High Roller, made a great video on this. There are three main types of PED usage in sports in general, and depending on what you are looking for, you may look to this type of PED usage. The most common one that a lot of people think that athletes take, and probably the stupidest one that you could take, is steroids. And the reason why I say steroids is stupid is because what it does is you're pretty much flooding your body with testosterone, which your body needs testosterone to build muscle, but you will put on a decent amount of size, and as soon as you stop taking the steroids, you will begin to see a immediate regression, unless if you have a crazy diet, which some athletes are able to replicate, but even if you are able to replicate it, you will not be able to maintain your steroid gains for long so pretty much you will only be good on steroids and buff on steroids while you're on steroids the second one is blood doping or epo and that's mainly for endurance and the final one is probably the one that we neglect the most we pay the least attention to but it is the most apparent in all of our sports today the final one is HGH, and there's a lot of ways that you can naturally manipulate your body into making HGH. And what HGH does is promotes recovery, boosts the amount of muscle that you could put on, which is very similar to what steroids do, only this is increasing your growth hormone as opposed to just flooding your body with testosterone. In addition to this, you'll see increases in strength and fat loss, and this will keep you younger for longer. In addition to this, you'll sleep way better. But again, I've seen a video on this before, whether LeBron James is on it or not. We're also gonna be playing devil's advocate to this entire situation because LeBron James does more than just potentially take HGH. Now again, these are some bold claims that may be true, may not be true, but you have to look at the facts over here. And the first one is a fairly scary one. According to an article from 2013, there's this one steroid clinic in 2013 that would provide this one bottle 
called LJ on it, which is what LeBron James's initials were. And a person named Paul would come in and pick it up. And of course, LeBron James's agent and really close friend is Rich Paul. And this is before Rich Paul completely blew up and was a main man in the media. So he was able to get away with it. Now, the thing about this is there's a lot of things that were consistent around that time with what LeBron James was going through. LeBron James would play for the Miami Heat, put on a ridiculous amount of muscle during a time where he was absolutely desperate to win a championship and make the most of his physical prime. So with that being said, he did everything he could to make sure he would win that championship. So why would LeBron take HGH if he was already successful, if he was already built, if he already had a ton of muscle? And again, going back to what HGH does is it boosts recovery. So those back-to-back -back games that players typically struggle through, LeBron James would be able to play. It boosts muscle, which could have been a side effect that LeBron didn't want because it would be too obvious that he was on it. It increased fat loss, which of course we saw him putting on lean muscle. It increased his strength, which we all know that LeBron James is a very strong guy and it made him look younger. And for the most part, LeBron James is a very young looking 35 year old, which is why we're making this video today. Because just two years ago, in his 15th season in the NBA, despite having the most mileage out of every player in the NBA and the most physical play style out of every player in the NBA, LeBron James played all 82 games. And this continued up until last year where he finally began to look human. So what is the devil's advocate to this argument and this is what most people in the comment section will say especially the ones that didn't make it to the end of the video so if there is somebody that comments this or someone comments that i didn't do my research please someone do me a favor and tell them to finish the freaking video and that's lebron james has an extremely very extreme diet and to give you an idea about what LeBron James does in order to boost his recovery and boost his diet in order to be the best physical specimen on earth, we're gonna provide you guys a little bit of a sample. So the first thing that we found out about LeBron James came out about two years ago where he reportedly told the world that he spends almost $1.5 million a year on his body in of itself. But you have to wonder, and this is of course supporting the argument about him potentially taking growth hormone, is what is that money being spent on? So his Miami teammate said LeBron James treats his body like an investment, saying that where a lot of people don't do it, he puts a lot of money behind taking care of his body. A lot of people think it's a big expense, but that big expense has allowed him to make a lot more money for a long period of time. Now, again, that could be a cover up or that could be the truth. But another thing that you could see is LeBron has a whole team of people who work with him from trainers to massage therapists, to chefs and there's even the story about going back to 2015 when lebron james began having back problems when he had back problems in 2015 he reached out to a man by the name of david alexander a trainer he worked with during his time in miami alexander pointed lebron to a guy named donnie raymond who is a former navy seal who's an expert in biomechanics Raymond helped LeBron James work on his core strength, eventually fixing his back problems, and he, LeBron, in turn, responded by hiring Raymond full time, and Raymond would then move to Akron, Ohio to be closer to LeBron James. And these are some of his core workouts that Raymond would make him do. And we all already know that LeBron is a huge workout fiend to the point where he even went as far as replicating the same gyms that he had in Cleveland and Miami just so he can make sure he has a consistent workout routine. But a part of his physical work is the various forms of treatment he gets to prepare for and recover from games. He was reportedly one of the first players to invest in a cryotherapy chamber, which uses liquid nitrogen to essentially be a more efficient version of an ice bath. And of course, a cryotherapy chamber is what Antonio Brown infamously got frostbite from. It's really freaking cold. Make sure you wear shoes in it, but it's supposed to speed up your recovery. LeBron also uses a hyperbaric chamber to put more oxygen into his body. It can also increase mental awareness. He wears compression sleeves, shorts, and boots to stimulate blood flow. And dude, take a look at those 
boots. They're freaking huge. And he wears compression gear on flights after games and gets hooked up to an electro stimulation machine to flush out toxins and make his muscles contract. And of course, LeBron still does the basic stuff like ice baths. He still gets massages and loves getting pedicures. He has his own chef who we're going to jump into his diet soon, but you can see in this meal in particular in 2017, he's having potatoes, spinach, and red meat, but not all. LeBron isn't this perfect guy that never indulges in himself. You can see that he loves red wine and he talks about it in interviews all the time, but let's jump into LeBron James's diet because his diet is apparently insane as well to the point where multiple nutritionists disagree with the diet in of itself. Apparently, LeBron James didn't eat sugar, carbs, or dairy for 67 straight days this summer, and he subsisted on meat, fish, fruits, and vegetables, which, if you think about it, that's kind of a contradiction because fruits are technically sugar and carbs, but I digress, and lost a ton of weight in the process. And I'm sure you guys know what we're talking about when we jump back into this picture from 2014 when LeBron James initially made his return to the Cleveland Cavaliers. People thought this diet was very extreme because LeBron looked very skinny at this point. There is a nutritionist that says that cutting out entire food groups is extreme and puts people at risk for nutritional deficiencies, not to mention nearly impossible to sustain in the long term. So if that's the case, how was LeBron James able to get so lean and then put on some more lean muscle upon his return to the Lakers. In addition to this, there are some examples of what he would eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, which all seem to be very consistent with a high protein paleo diet. But at the end of the day, here's the thing that bugs me. And of course, there's no way I could ever prove if LeBron took HGH or didn't take HGH. In my opinion, it is in the NBA's best interest to hide the secret of LeBron James and for LeBron to hide this secret from everybody else. Because when LeBron was at his best, even when he was at his best, it didn't really affect the NBA to a seismic degree. This isn't a guy that had tremendous success in the NBA Finals. He is still a three-time champion and he's lost more in the NBA Finals than he has won. So it's not like he has had this unfair advantage to tear up the competition, but at the same time, he provided tremendous entertainment value in a conference that really needed it, which at the time was the Eastern Conference, which we could all agree was a fairly weak conference. I do believe that he did take it. The signs show it. He did lose his hair. He did put on a decent amount of size. He just recently restored his hairline, and I'm assuming that's because he stopped taking it. But I want to get your guys' opinions in the comment section down below. And again, I'm a gigantic LeBron James fan.